Hello and welcome to another video by The Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, I will be going over integrating WebCore with If This Then That. In a previous video of this Getting to Know WebCore series, I briefly touched on the ability to integrate WebCore with If This Then That and figured it would be good to go over how to set it up and give a couple examples of why you may want to. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so you can stay up to date when I release more videos in the series along with all my other tech related videos. For those not familiar with If This Then That, it is a free online based automation platform Form that allows users to easily and quickly integrate multiple smart home technologies with other IoT devices or online services. A few examples of what can be done with this platform include pausing a robot vacuum when answering a call, turning off lights when you leave the house, or turning on a Wemo switch when a Nest Cam detects motion. If This Then That is a great resource that can simplify everyday tasks in your life. There are two ways to have WebCore and If This Then That interact with each other. You can either have WebCore trigger an applet within If This Then That, or have an applet trigger a WebCore piston. We will first go over having WebCore trigger an If This Then That applet. To do this, we must first set up WebCore to be able to communicate with If This Then That. To start, go to Settings in the WebCore dashboard. Under Settings, select Integrations. From here, you can see a section going over If This Then That integration. We need to get a Maker URL. To do this, click on the If This Then That setting link from the page. The new window that opens will be If This Then That. If you are not already logged in, you will need to log in. From here, click on the Connect button. This will enable webhooks for If This Then That. From there, click on the Documentation button on the top right hand corner. We will then need to grab the URL at the top of this page, so select the entire URL and copy it. Then go back to the WebCore dashboard and paste it into the URL section for the If This Then That and click on Apply. And with that, we are now able to have WebCore trigger an If This Then That applet, so let's jump right in. For the next section of this video, I will be going through relatively quickly and only touching on what I am doing at a high level. If you want to go more in depth, check out my Introduction to WebCore video or my Dashboard Deep Dive video. You can find links to both videos below. Back on the main WebCore dashboard, we are going to click on New Piston and create a new blank piston. Next, name the piston and click on Create. This piston will be set up to deploy my Husqvarna auto mower whenever a button is pushed. It will also have the auto mower park on its charging base whenever a different button is pushed, and it will flash a light when it starts charging. From within the piston, add the first if block statement. The action will be if my office light switch is double tapped up, which equates to button 1 being pushed for the device handler that's running my light switch. Next we will add the if this then that action under the then section. This one is a little difficult to find under the Add a New Action window. You're going to leave the drop down alone and just click on Add a Task. This will bring you to a new window where you can do things like send an email, send a notification, or execute a piston. Here select the Send an If This Then That Maker event. Under the event value, we will put in the applet trigger name we will reference in If This Then That. One thing to keep in mind is that you cannot use spaces. If you want to, you can use underscores. I also recommend making sure your applet trigger name is unique to any other applet trigger name, otherwise you could accidentally trigger more than one applet. All the other values will be left alone. Once done, click on Add. We will then create our next if block in this piston. We will follow the same steps, except this time we will have a different button pushed and we will have a new applet trigger name. With the two if blocks created, we can save the piston and go back to if this then that. On the if this then that dashboard, click on your logo and click on create in the menu. From here, you are able to make your own applets. We will first make the two applets to start and stop the auto mower, which will be triggered by WebCore. And then we will create a third applet, which will trigger WebCore to flash a light. To get started, click on the plus sign. In the search box on the new page, search for webhooks and click on it. From here, you will click the receive a web request trigger. Then enter the value for the first if statement in our piston and then click on create trigger. Next click on the new plus mark. From here you will search for the service you want to be triggered. For this automation I will be using the Husqvarna service. And from there I will pick start auto mower. Select the auto mower I want and click on create action. After that you will be brought to a review screen. This is where you can see what the applet will do. Once you're all done checking it out, click on finish. We will now go through the same process again, but this time we will pick the action of stopping the auto mower, and we will make sure the webhook trigger is different. This is one of the downsides to if this then that. I really like the ability to have multiple if statements in a single piston like in WebCore, compared to having to click through and create multiple applets. This can be a daunting task if you have a large number of applets to make. The last applet we are going to create is for if this then that to trigger a piston within WebCore. This applet will trigger when the auto mower starts charging and the piston triggered will cause a light to flash. But first we need to make the last if block in the WebCore dashboard. 
Back in the piston editor, we will add a third if block. This condition will be under virtual device and we will select if this then that. Next will be to name the trigger. Notice that as you enter in a value, it changes the URL. Once entered, copy the entire URL below the value and save it for the applet, then click Add. Next we will add an action under Then. This action will be to flash a light on and off five times. Once configured, it's time to create the triggering applet in the If This Then That dashboard. Click on Create under the menu. From here, click on the plus sign to add a trigger. This time, the service to be used will be Husqvarna. Inside the service, the option I'm going to pick is Auto Mower Starts Charging. In the trigger, I'm going to assign the one auto mower I own and click Create. Next is to add the action. Here we will select the webhook service. In the action field, we will paste the copied URL from the piston under URL. Under method, we will change it to post. After it's ready, click on create action. And finally, once reviewed, click on finish. Now with everything set up, it's time to test out our automation. First, we will push button one on the light switch. Great, the lawnmower is off to cut the grass. I think it's time to call back the lawnmower. We'll do this by pushing button two on the light switch. We'll know it made it back okay because our third if block will be triggered and that is to flash the lamp five times. You could set this up a little differently to flash a different number of times for an error or for other events occurring or you could if you have an RGB light for example change the coloring of it but for this example I'm just going to flash the light a couple times. Wonderful! So we were able to integrate WebCore with If This Then That and set up a piston to both trigger different applets as well as be triggered by an applet. As you saw, there is a very large number of services that can connect If This Then That, which can make WebCore an even greater automation tool. Just keep in mind that the interactions with If This Then That is a bit on the slower side. This is just how If This Then That is, so I wouldn't recommend using it for anything super critical. That's it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. And feel free to tell me in the comments below about some of your own web core experiences or anything home automation related. Thank you for watching.